Hi campers, hope you're doing well. well. I'm back out again and I've got my rucksack with me. I'm out, I'm out for an overnighter. I'm down here on a um, sort of a shingly, shelly beach. It's actually it's like crumbled up shells on this beach. It's not sand or anything. But I'm going to bivy down here tonight. This is beside the, uh, the River Thames. Got a massive container ship just coming in out there. I don't know if that can be seen on the camera just yet, but it'll come cruising past in a minute. But it's a lovely, lovely sunny day. There's no wind, no biting insects about. It's perfect camping weather, I think. Looking forward to this evening. It should be a nice evening. But um, it's probably going to get a little bit chilly once the sun goes down, I think, because we're at the tail end of summer now. And uh, the evenings are definitely starting to get a bit cooler. But it's great to be out. I've got a nice couple of beers to uh, drink tonight. I've got a um, a new stove to play with, which I'll show you in a bit. Um, I've really got a bit of a problem with stoves, I think. Um, but I'll talk more about that later. I'm on my own. I'm on a solo camp tonight. Um, so apologies in advance. It's probably going to be a long, long video because my solo videos are always a bit longer than the others because I get bored and talk to the camera quite a bit. But there you go. Sorry for that interlude. I was just letting the cyclists go by on the path behind me. I haven't quite plucked up the courage to carry on talking to my camera when people are um, walking by or cycling by. I just feel like a bit of a dick. But there you go. That's, that's just me. So tonight yeah, I've got a couple of beers to drink, I'm going to sit here, enjoy the weather, watch the, uh, the ships go by, watch, watch the wildlife, I've got my binoculars with me as well. Should get some nice wildlife down here on the, um, the flats and out behind on the marshes as well, because this, this is the North Cape Marshes, it's um, Charles Dickens country, um, it's the area where he set um, the opening sequences to the Great Expectations novel. Um, where Pip meets uh, the, the, the famous convict Magwitch and um, it's, um, it's got a lot of history to this area and um, it's a nice area for me to come to as well down here because living in the southeast of England as I do it's heavily populated um, there aren't many areas that you can come to where you can feel as though you're a bit remote from everything and um, yeah this is one of the areas I think where you can actually kind of get away from it. Well, I've walked four miles to get down here from the nearest village. Um, there isn't another village in that direction for about four or five miles as well. It's, it's really tucked out of the way. You've got some farming and agriculture activity behind. You've got the, the river um, and Essex on the other side of the river. Essex. Um, so that young Des Catties lives over there somewhere. Um, hello Des, I haven't got no Darjean and coffee for you today I'm afraid, just the real Mc just the real McCoy actual tea, but there you go, and then tonight I'm going to cook up uh, an authentic uh, spaghetti carbonara as my plan in my new stove, um, and give it a good test, hopefully that will come out nice. And that's it. 
I'll get my bivvy out a little bit later on oh, around dinner time I expect I'm gonna camp out here on the beach sort of flatten it off a little bit it's low tide at the minute but I think the high tide sort of is down the beach a bit I, I should be safe but I'll be prepared to do a runner up the bank if I have to So that's it from me. I'll bring you back when something exciting happens, which it probably won't. I'll speak to you soon. So I mentioned that I've got a new stove, and here it is. I'm a big fan of the uh, Trangia burner. I've been using it in conjunction with my other pots and pans for years and years now. I absolutely swear by it. It's a brilliant bit of kit. It's simple, it's reliable, and it genuinely does work in all, all seasons of the year as well, and it works really well. Um, so I've got the smaller Trangia systems. I've got the, the Trangia Mini and the Trangia Triangle, but I, I thought it was worthwhile getting the, the actual cook system now. Um, so a lot of my friends I've, I've seen are using it, and it looks like a, a really good quality system and um, I know the system, I know the burner works really well and so I've got this one which is the Trangia 27 got the optional pouch to go with it as well although I might have to hit up Mr Fryers, David Fryers to see if you can get a nice get a nice pouch off of him to go for it I'll have to talk to him about that and here it is I'm not going to go into too much detail about the makeup of the system. It's the Trangia 27 hard anodized version. Um, and what I'll do, rather than give you a, a lengthy talk for it, I've, I'm going to put in the um, in the in the corner uh, a sort of link to my friend Chris's video on, on exactly the same cook set, um, and he gives a really good detailed overview of it. Um, so rather than bore you with yet another Trangia video, that's, of which there are thousands online. I'll, I'll link you to Chris's. Go check his channel out and his video on this. Um, and then I'm going to get a brew on in a minute, have a cup of tea, and then this evening I'm going to use this to cook my um, carbonara. So I think it'll be a good test for the system. So, got my frying pan. I've got the optional extra um, strainer for it as well. I think that's a really useful addition put a little spatula of mine in there, pot grip, and I've added the kettle to it as well, it didn't, didn't come with this system, but I already had this kettle that goes with the set, as you can see it's a bit, bit old and a bit used, but it, it, it's designed to go with this actual this cook set, so I've added it into it, it's nice to have a kettle, it's nice, and, uh, nice to have a, a cup of tea out of a kettle, it's, lovely and then just got the um, the saucepans which I'll be using later and the stove base and the windshield that's what I really liked about this system is the windshield um, a lot of my other stoves don't have any uh, decent wind protection um, and this system is designed into it so I'm hope, hopeful that that will work quite well. So I'm not going to bore you any more about the system. I'm going to uh, show you it in action. I'm going to get a kettle on so I can have a drink. I'll bring you back for that. It doesn't look like the flame is burning there, but it is definitely a light. Got me a uh, home almost set up there tonight. Got the poncho tarp out. Got me uh, my sofa, my coffee table, a bit of driftwood propping up the side there. I shall run my bivvy out there tonight. 
Just me Dutch foot baby. Just fold this end down. Bit of shelter. Yeah, quite happy with that. It's not anchored down that well because it's in this sort of sandy shelly stuff. So it doesn't get a firm fix in, but it's good enough. It's gonna it should hold. Lovely jubbly. Tidy high campers, so it's five o'clock now. I think I'm gonna start getting my dinner ready. And I'm gonna cook it all on me trangia there get the kettle out of the way i've got my saucepans and a frying pan there and there's the pot grip and what i'm going to do is i'm going to cook uh, an authentic uh, spaghetti carbonara or authentic ish and the reason i say authentic is because here in the uk when we have carbonara i think a lot of us we go to a shop we buy a jar of sauce carbonara sauce and we, we cook that up with mushrooms, onion, bacon, chicken, all sorts of stuff and put that with, with whatever pasta we fancy. But in, in Rome, in Italy and, and in Rome in particular, um, I think they do it quite a lot differently to that and, and the authentic way of doing carbonara is a lot more simple than you might otherwise believe uh, and so they don't actually use a jar of sauce for example they don't put so many ingredients into it it's, it's very simple and so the ingredients that i've got here are just down here i've got some spaghetti there which is, is regular sort of dry spaghetti but i snapped it in half to sort of so that it packs in in the rucksack easier i've got some pancetta um, which is which came diced up in the packet and I've just decanted it into a little bag again for easier transportation one egg which we use as part of making the sauce and then in, in this pot here I've got some grated parmesan cheese and then here I've just got um, my seasoning that I bring with me to most camps and, and there is some salt that I'll be adding to the um, the spaghetti when I get that ready and that's it that's all you need to make a, an authentic ish carbonara um, I say it's authentic ish because the meat that they use in this is slightly different it's um it's the pig it's the cheek of the pig that they use in Italy I think it's called uh, group I can't remember I can't pronounce it what it is but um yes it is the cheek of the pig that and pancetta is, is just part of part of bacon I think um, and the other thing that's different is the cheese I've got parmesan and I think if you're gonna be tr true to how the Romans do it then you use uh, pecorino but they, they 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 also use parmesan as an acceptable alternative so First thing I'm going to do is get the um, the pasta cooked up in some salty water. Then I'll put that to one side and get the pancetta cooking uh, and before I add in the spaghetti to the mix and mix it up with uh, the egg and the cheese. So um, I'll bring you back and I'll, I'll set up the uh, the camera and, and bring you along as, as I go. I'll speak to you in a bit. So first things first, I've got the stove lit, you probably can't see the flame but it is definitely going. Get some water on to boil and just going to put some uh, put some salt into that as well. that's boiling I'll put the pasta on and simmer that for about five minutes right. we've got ourselves a boil so I'm gonna get the pasta in that might be a bit too much for me I don't know we'll see
Nice. Cook that up for about five minutes. I want it to be um, al dente, as the chefs say. So it's a little, not quite soft when you chew it, but um, it will finish cooking properly when I mix it in with the carbonara. Right, I'm gonna, the pasta's now cooked. I'm gonna set that to one side. Just put the lid on there to keep it a little bit warm. In the meantime, I've put the egg, the egg into this bowl. I've beaten the egg. Get in a bit of the cheese. Mix the cheese in. And that, that will go on a little later. And then next up, I've got to go on with the pan. So using the pot grips to uh, adjust these here get that on straight on with the straight on with the uh, pancetta lovely sizzle I've probably done way too much pancetta there no oil has gone into the pan My Expectation is that the um, oils will start to come out of the uh, pancetta and lubricate the pan. We'll see how that goes. I've got a little bit of lard here just in case I need to add some. Way too much. Hey ho. Now with the bacon, the pancetta cooked, I'm going to take the turn the heat off. Then I'm going to get in. With pasta. I'll put some of the water into that. And now that salty water should mix with the fat. start to create some of that lovely creamy sauce. It's a bit watery at the moment but that's going to thicken up as soon as I add the cheese and the egg right here. It's important that you do this off the heat otherwise you're going to create a scrambled egg just keep stirring it through starting to thicken up nicely now although maybe I put a little bit too much water in but what the hay some of that liquid to make it a little bit drier is add some more cheese because you can never have too much cheese can you and this is a carbonara after all that's many lovely When 
I watched the chefs do this, they were flipping it about and all sorts. Got a wasp buzzing around me now, she's lovely. Go away. Bit more cheese, I think. There you go, nice creamy cheese, cheesy carbonara sauce, and there's just one more ingredient to put on that, and that is black pepper. Don't add any salt because you did that when you cooked the pepper when you cook the, um, the spaghetti. No more salt is needed once you do that. And that's it, that's me done. I'm gonna tuck into that. That looks delish. And then I've got a little bit of cheese left, so you know, might as well use it. Voila. Like this, I could have done with a fork, I think, but I'll struggle by. It was lovely. Mmm, that was really nice. The other thing I probably shouldn't have done, I used smoked pan I probably didn't need to do that, but otherwise, that is delicious. now because that that's not the um the easiest thing to eat on camera is it so i'm going to get tucked into this enjoy the uh the views and i'll bring you back in a bit all right that was dinner cooked and washed up tasted lovely sun's getting lower over there and i've just put out the bivy bag for tonight same as you've seen before on my videos, the Dutch hooped bivy. Inside, just climb under the top. I've got me um, Rab Solar two two season sleeping bag and uh, Alp kit pillow and one of Dave Fry's big box pouches there with all the sort of extra clothes in. I've got thermal underwear, hat, gloves, buff. All sorts in there probably won't need it tonight it's quite mild but it's always there if you need it and yeah that two season bag should keep me was good down to minus one uh, in all honesty i'm probably going to try and use that throughout the year actually we'll see how it goes i'm going to zip up this bivy bag now before any more sand and crap gets inside it and time i think to get on those beers over there i'll crack one of them open in a minute proper job tonight ah, cheers that's a nice drop that is drunk quite a lot of that in, in Cornwall the other day very nice so that's me for the night now I've got the bed set up I've had my dinner and uh, just gonna enjoy a drink now. Chill out.
tide should slowly start to come in now. Uh, I think high tide's about 11ish, so um, I'll find out if it comes up this high or not, but it should be okay. Lovely. Cracking sunset tonight. It's a lovely evening. I know this place pales into comparison of the national parks in our country, like the lakes and the Peak District, Dartmoor, and all the rest of it, but. There are one or two little pockets of this part of the country um, where it is quite stunning. I think this is one of them. Just over there, you've got remnants of some old uh, factories from late 19th century, I think, during the run up to the World Great, Great War. I think they're associated with an explosives factory that's further across, f further along the marshes. And then just over there, you've got London Gateway Port, which is a major container port in the UK. You can hear the frogs in the water over there. It really is nice. And the tide's starting to come back in. If you look back on some of my previous videos on my YouTube channel, I think there's a series of videos on there called Curious Cows and Camping, where I came down here to have a, have a camp out, and there was um, a herd of cows in this field here, uh, and one of them was a, uh, a rather randy bull, and um, that bull was having its wicked way with the lady cows in the herd and uh, they all come flocking around me and I won't lie, it was quite intimidating I, I made haste and, and got out of that field quite quickly and retreated three miles back to my car and then went to uh, my, my usual woodland spot so it was, was, it was with some trepidation that I came back down here again this time I was wondering where the cows might be but I've not seen them this time so that was, that was good but I've been rewarded some glorious weather you can go one of two ways down here you can either have it glorious like this or it can be pretty horrendous weather because you're quite exposed down here you've got the, the wide open water behind you and the wind really does blow through and it can get quite cold down here if you're not prepared so that, that's why this time I came down I brought all my sort of warm sort of merino wool thermals um, sleeping bags or my warm sleeping bag and, and ensure that I have plenty of layers of clothing as well to sort of keep me cold because I expect it will get a little bit chilly tonight but bring it on I'm ready for it but isn't that lovely This is why we do this wild camping monarchy, so we can enjoy some scenery like this. It's wonderful. Moon's out now. Got 
so much sand in it. Lovely. I don't know if you can see me. It's getting a bit dark here. Very nice. I had to um, tog up, get my hoodie on and everything. Not because it's cold, but um, the mozzies are out and they're out in force. So I've covered myself in Nordic summer. Got the citronella candle burning. Hopefully with the layers I've got on I should be alright. But um, they do take a liking to me at the moment for some reason. Must be my tasty blood. There you go. But that moon is stunning tonight. I'm hoping for a clear sky when the stars come out and try and get some decent night photos. If I did, I'll pop them in the video. If I didn't, they won't be there. We'll see what happens. Good night for now. Time for beer number two now. It's one of my old favourite Brewdog. Jet Black Heart Vanilla Oatmeal Stout. 6%. This is a lovely one. If you like Guinness, then this is Guinness on another level. It's awesome. Oh, that's lovely, that is. So smooth. Time for one more brew. Morning all. It's just gone half past six. Um, I've woken up to this lovely uh, cloud inversion here on the field and out on the river too. It's all, all fogged over. Slept pretty well though. Very well considering I only, I only had a, um, a thin foam mat as a sleeping pad. I was uh, quite surprised at that find that I'm kind of getting used to sleeping on a foam pad now it's um yeah, it's all right keeps you warm and it's not it's, it's comfortable enough for me but what a view what a view the sun's not yet risen I think it's due to rise about seven ish so hopefully I'll get some photos of the sun rising but it, it will be rising from over there and very very cloudy so we'll see but what a lovely morning to wake up to i think it's time to get the kettle on have a cup of tea I'll bring it back in a bit.
everything's just got sand on it everywhere. There we go then, that's my sleep system. Dutch Hoot Bivy there in the uh, David Fry's bag. Rab Soda 2 sleeping bag. The warm clothing and pillow. Didn't use any of the warm clothing in the end. And the X-Ped Flex Mat sleeping pad, which has been really good. I've got the blue one of those as well, which is a bit thicker. I thought I'd try the thinner orange one. And yeah, it's fine. The blue one's definitely more comfortable, but it's a little bit more bulky. And that's it. I've got to put all that in that rucksack now. But I'm leaving in the, uh, the brew kit out. I'm letting the poncho dry off for a bit longer. Lots of condensation last night. So uh, I'll probably have another cup of tea and some porridge in a minute. Right, I'm all packed up now, well, almost. Just having some breakfast and probably a cup of tea. Got my rubbish in the bag there. And I shall take a walk back to the car. It's about three miles, so shouldn't be too bad. Sun's out. Happy days. That's been a good camp. We really enjoyed it first camp I've had this year uh, that hasn't rained oh, it's, I've, I've had a bit of a, um, a hex on me this year for some reason every camp's been a wet one but this one's been beautiful really enjoyed it so I'll bring you I'll bring you back after a cup of tea and I'll uh, say goodbye then bye for now so I've got um banana flavoured porridge in there I've added some milk powder I'm going to put some uh,
peanut butter in it as well from a, a British Army ration pack. And it's just dawned on me that opening this sachet of peanut butter, it's going to be the first time I've had to use my uh, my knife for this entire trip. So, just goes to show you can go out wild camping. You don't have to be all tooled up with whatever knives or axes or saws or what have you, and uh, you can still have a good time. So yeah, just a quick point. A hot walk back to the car. I'm sweating just drinking tea. <clears throat> right, folks. Well, thanks for watching. I apologise, it's been a long one. I've talked to the camera quite a bit on this this uh, video, so that's unusual for me. But it seems to be seems to be becoming typical for a solo camp for me because. You're the only thing I talk to. Um, but there you go. Well, I'm all packed up. I'm going to leave these um, bits of driftwood here because they were here when I got here. Um, hopefully they stay here because they're really useful seats. And um, they're coming really handy. So definitely coming back to this spot. It's a lovely place to camp. Really nice. I think next time I'll probably pack a little bit lighter. Maybe not take so much um, uh, extravagant cookware and food. Maybe just pack simple next time. Uh, take a simple cook set. Because I'm probably going to need the extra space in the bag for the warmer clothing next time. But I'll bid you farewell. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments. And I'll see you on the next camp. Bye for now.